cover two topics in the geology module. First, it'll go through the fence diagram command under Stratocalc. And then after that, it'll go through the isopac map, showing you a couple of quick isopac commands. First thing we'll do is just a standard fence diagram cutting through the pre-calculated grids. So the pre-calculated grid model must be built already. We'll go into fence diagram. And I'll go off 2D grid coming from the pre-calculated grids. My scale is 100 horizontal, 50 vertical. So that'll be a 2x vertical exaggeration. I will draw the geologic columns. I will hatch the fence. Hit OK. Grab the elevation model dot pre-calc. And we'll just grab this polyline that's drawn from hole to hole. Just a standard 2D polyline. Choose the bottom and top elevations and the lower left corner for the diagram. So it, sh it first draws a slice through the grids and then it's reading the drill holes and drawing the geologic drill holes on top of that. And we'll just zoom in and check it out and notice how nicely the drill holes match up with the grid files. The black in the drill hole is the coal seam. And the coloring is set from the drill hole defined strata command. It's all predefined to match up in the drill holes and the grid names in the pre-calc model. And then the layers, of course, are colored as well. So that's one quick fence diagram. OK, let me erase that one. And let's do uh, just a standard polyline now, 2D polyline. And I'll actually offset it. Let's do three cross sections at one time. We'll just copy it down, and then I'll run the command tag fence polylines, give them names, pick the first one, it's fence one, hit enter, there's the next one, fence two, and the last one, fence three. But you can call them whatever you want, A to A prime or whatever you'd like. Run fence diagram command, this time turn on the checkbox, process multiple named fence polylines. Everything else should be the same. Grab the model. And just crossing select all the polylines, it'll find the named fence polylines. And zoom out and pick the location, and it should stack up your fence diagrams one on top of the other. And if it hit any drill holes within the cutoff tolerance, it does draw the drill holes on the section as well. And it labels them nicely on the left hand side. There's fence one, fence two. So it's a quick and easy way to get your cross sections drawn. Now we're going to do the quick fence command. We'll go to fence diagram, quick fence, Stratocal quick fence, grab the elevation model, P for polyline, and let's just take this top fence line. And you'll see the quick fence showing up down below, triangle and plan view showing you where you're at. But what's nice about this command is you can check the grids as you move the polyline around real time with the adjust alignment button. If I click on that and grab the little mi middle triangle symbol of the polyline, now watch the fence diagram section below as I move this polyline anywhere in the plan. It's just an, an instantaneous slice through the grids down below. It's a quick way to check your geology. And this does show also if the grids are crossing. And also if they come above the ground surface, maybe due to an outcrop, such as what you see there. So that's the quick fence. Exit there. And we'll do one more fence diagram in 3D. I'll go to fence diagram. This time I'll turn on in real world coordinates. It's going to draw it into the screen. We'll have to rotate it up into 3D to view it. And turn off process multiple. We'll just do the one. And no geo, drill hole geologic columns. Grab the same elevation model and pick the polyline. So now it's drawing it straight beneath the polyline in 3D. And we'll just hit this little view button to tip it up on the side. And maybe do the AutoCAD orbit to rotate around. You can see it's very quick and easy to, to get a 3D slice through the geology as well. So there it is. You can look at the topography of the contours matches the topo of the cross section. Okay, done with that. Back to plan view. Now we're going to switch drawings into another one for isopacking. This is just a simple set of drill holes, uh, grid boundary. First thing I'll do is just show you the isopack from a grid file. I'll go to Stratocalc, isopack maps, strata, isopack maps. And notice the little icon next to the word. We're going to simulate, uh, reproduce that map with the BTU. We'll come right off a pre-made grid file made out of the drill holes. I'll pick this inclusion, no exclusion. And we'll just grab a BTU grid, C60 BTU. There's the layer it'll be drawn on. There's the range of the BTUs. 
I will hatch zones. I want to colorize or hatch in between the different contour ranges. And let's see, this color range looks fine. So the low end of the spectrum, this is a BTU grid, is going to be blue. And then as it gets up into the warmer, better burning coal, it's going to be hotter up to 7150. This is an lignite example. Hit OK. And there's the colored map. I'll pick a, a location for my legend. Let's bump it up to about 150 in size. So now I'll send the hatch to the back with the command under view, display order, send hatches to back. Automatically sends it all behind so you can see the contours and the drill holes on top. It's a nice command for generating isopacks with hatching. These could be solid fill or hatches in between. Okay, the next thing we'll do is an isopack from the drill holes. And what we'll do is isolate just those layers for now. Actually, let me undo. I will freeze the drill holes and erase everything else. I'll freeze that those two layers and delete all this. And then restore the layers. Now we're going to generate an isopack of a thickness. For example, I want to find out where the split line is between a certain coal seam. Here is the 60 seam, C60 is full on that side of the project, and over here it splits into a 61 and 62. So I'd like to find that line and have it contour for me exactly. We'll use the command isopack maps for that. Stratocalc isopack maps. This time we'll come off throw holes from screen, and we'll use this modeling method, say um, linear least squares, to give a nice smooth polyline. Hit OK. I'll window out all the drill holes, pick the inclusion polyline, no exclusion, makes a grid on the fly, dimensions 50 by 50, and we're going to look for the C60 seam and see where that goes to zero, and this, the split will then begin. Let's model up the thickness, and I don't want to do an actual interval, I'm looking for just one value specifically, I'm going to go with the point, point, uh, zero 0.01 line. I don't want to do the zero contour because I'd have all sorts of zeros over here. I just want the one line where the, the thickness begins to get a value. 0 0.01 would work, 0 0.05, or sometimes 0.1. I won't hatch it this time. Hit OK. We'll use the second weighting factor and exit out. Exit out. And just like I expected, I knew that line would be somewhere between the east and west halves. So for example, this drill hole would be split, 61, 62, and this drill hole should be full, C60. So that's a good way to use your isopack map and contour value to find a line based on thickness. This concludes the movie on fence diagrams and isopacks. Thank you.